Derek White received partially tongue-in-cheek MVP chance from the Garden Fateful after leading the 6-1-7 with a 30-piece. The return of Porzingis saw the Latvian drop 21 on 7 for 13, while racking up two steals. With the return of the Unicorn and the W against New York, the Celtics improved to 11-1 when their legit starting lineup of White, Holiday, Brown, Tatum, and Porzingis all suit up. With Jokic and the Nuggets taking an L to Houston, on their home floor specifically, Boston's now the only undefeated team. Before getting to more Celtic tidbits that you can't miss, just 10.8% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, back to the Celtics. Just like Jason Tatum last week, Jalen Brown received his first career ejection, as this was a questionable one with JB being ejected from the bench, far from physically interacting with any official. Speaking on getting tossed, Brown would say, quote, I always thought my first career rejection would be something a little more exciting, guys tussling up, thrown to the ground, not some over-emotional ref who had a bad day. What I'm most upset about is that I should have gotten my effing money's worth, end quote. Meanwhile, for the Buffalo Derek White, speaking on the MVP chance he received, He'd have some high praise for the Boston crowd. We got the best fans in the league, so um, I'm always thankful and grateful, grateful for them. Um, I mean, I know I'm not the MVP, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's always cool to hear. We've covered the Celtics on this channel for the last few years, and I find it amazing how the roster, specifically the first five, has developed around Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown since I first started heavily covering this team. To drastically improve the starting lineup's formidability, first GM Brad Stevens traded away Josh Richardson for Derek White. A year and change later, Brad dealt away Marcus Smart in exchange for Chris Stapp's Porzingis. A few months following that, Stevens dealt Time Lord Robert Williams along with Malcolm Brogdon in exchange for Drew Holiday. That's what you call GM wizardry at its finest. Even before this team traded for Holiday, I had an upload saying Boston could win the 2024 championship. After the deal for Drew, as we went on to talk about, the already championship-favored seas became increasingly dangerous. Adding one of the top backcourt stoppers across the association was massive. However, Drew still has a lot to prove in terms of fitting in both game plan and mentality-wise. Regarding leadership, he was the steadiest, healthiest player in Milwaukee's 2021 championship run. Without Giannis in games 5 and 6 of the East Finals against Atlanta, as a top option, Drew would average 27 over the next two games, while being Milwaukee's most versatile defender, closing out the Hawks. That version of Holiday may have come and gone, though. To be fair, in the most recent win against the Knicks, the stock exchange backcourt of the champ, along with a bald Mamba, combined for seven stocks, with Drew compiling two steals and a block. In my opinion, Drew has to more consistently display that he's hungry enough to win a second ring. Given despite being known as a lockdown stopper, he struggled defensively over his last handful of outings. Far from setting the tone on this end like he did as a buck, over only the span of his last eight outings, LaMelo Ball, Tyrese Halliburton, Damian Lillard, and Dennis Schroeder have all been efficient while scoring at the very least 23 points against Drew. Brunson dropped 23 as well in the latest W, but was 0 of 5 from deep, so we'll give Holiday a pass there. Amidst the aforementioned 8 game span, Drew missed 2 showings with an ankle sprain as well. It's beginning to become a question mark as to how much the 33 year old has left in the tank, in terms of durability. Going from a physical to a more controllable mental standpoint, you can't forget Every other member of this Celtics roster are desperate to win their first title, which is an experience Drew's already went through with the rivaled Bucks. Even if his body can't provide what it once could though, Holiday has the IQ and communication to be Boston's top vocal leader defensively, like he was in Milwaukee. On the other end, Holiday's 43.3% shooting from the field is the lowest since his first All-Star campaign in 2012-13 in Philadelphia, but expect the veteran to find his footing as he gains mid-season form. For Chris Stapp's Porzingis, the Latvian Lasers' return saw him pick up right where he left off with efficient in-and-out production. KP posted Boston's first three buckets, two of which were floor spacing deep range bombs. I think it's great the Celtics didn't rush the Latvian back, allowing him to fully recover, and that was the right call. The movement of Chris Stapps was utterly fluid, and he was his typically aggressive self getting to and attacking in his hotspots. Tied with Domantas Sabonis of the Sacramento Kings, it was KP's NBA 7th most among centers, 9th 20 plus point performance. That's in spite of Chris Stapps having missed 5 of Boston's 21 games, and the production the Celtics have gotten from the center position has been unmatched in comparison to prior years. 
that's going to be big time for them come the postseason. It would have been short-sighted to force KP back for the in-season tournament matchup against Indiana, given we all know you don't win championships in December, and striving for the real trophy in June to secure franchise title number 18 has and always will be the main priority for Boston. Give Indiana credit, and the in-season tournament definitely has its benefits. There will always, however, be a lack of historical significance behind it, and there are many other issues that I could talk about in an entire separate video with the format. Point is, it's never ideal to rush a player back when they aren't 100% in a non-playoff setting. Noting the smart decision to activate him at the perfect time, Porzingis stated, quote, calf felt clean, nothing, no tightness, shout out to our medical staff. He also went on to credit Derek White in the W saying, more and more people are talking about it, but I think he's still very underrated. In terms of Derek, he would give respect right back to KP, saying, quote, He can do literally everything on the basketball court. Having him back out there was huge for us. End quote. The biggest improvement in Derek's game throughout his career has been the man's three-point shooting. Once a hovering around 30% deep range shooter from his sophomore through to his sixth career year, over the past two campaigns in Boston, Derek shot 38 plus percent from deep. Additionally, along with shooting a career best other than his 17 game rookie year from beyond the arc, D. White is also making a career best 74% of his shots from 0 to 3 feet in. So, the 29 year old from Parker, Colorado, and former Division II college basketball player, having his breakout season in the prime of his career, has been this Boston team's most pleasant 23 24 surprise. I think if Derek can maintain this type of production while staying poised and stable defensively, the Celtics may finally be the different animal come the playoffs we've been expecting them to be for the last few years. I want to know in your opinion though, where does Derek make the biggest impact for the Celtics? A tough question, but the best hoops talk community on YouTube is built for it. Best answer gets a shout out next video and gets up on the Speaks board for a chance to win free NBA merch. Today's shout out goes to Speaks board leader Christian Moore, who says, Al Horford has so many great qualities, his leadership, IQ, and versatility are super underrated, but if I had to choose one, his best quality would be his versatility, he's able to play in any role that's needed of him, he's able to start and come off the bench as well as play on or off the ball, his shooting ability has allowed Boston to run double big lineups, which causes problems for smaller teams. He's also able to guard a lot of different types of players, allowing Boston to switch up their defense when he's on the court. He's been a blessing ever since he first arrived in Boston. Great in-depth on-court take right there. Appreciate every answer. D-Flow signing off.